welcome to the Coach Tyler Show. Hi there. You're back. You're back. I know by now, you know, this show kicks off at 8 p.m. Um, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Coach Kyo Show. Your host, Kyo Day, here. Um, <clears throat> as you oftentimes start this show um, by reminding you that greater is he that is in us. Um, than he that is in the world. <clears throat> it should be a constant reminder in your day-to-day -day life because um, nothing is perfect. Nothing is um, oftentimes the way you want it to be. Um, you're not always on the path that you want to go. You're not always saying or doing, <clears throat> excuse me, the things that you want to do. But greater, greater is he that is in you. Um, the world will always have their opinions. But like the good man said, don't let someone's opinion of you um, define you. So just let me know if you hear me well and you see me well. That's always... Um, Always good to know so that there's no hindrance uh, with the message reaching where it's supposed to go. Remember the show, we talk all things soccer nevertheless. Um, but the most important thing here on this show is to, is to impact and inspire the lives of our young people um, to live out their purpose. It's very uncertain times, it's important. You see a lot of suicide. You, you're hearing a lot about mental health. <clears throat> There's so much distractions. There's so many trends um, in the world today that don't necessarily need to be followed, but um, it's common. It, uh, there are norms now, and everybody seems to be going down that path, and nobody wants to. Uh, we don't have people that want to swim upstream anymore. They want to go with the flow. So it's important uh, for us to bring this content that so that we're able to inspire and to impact our young people to live out their purpose. That That is so unique in itself that you don't have to be like no one else. You don't have to look like no one else. You don't have to sound like no one else. Mm, there's something greater on the inside of you that the world um, needs to see. Like always, we hope at the ending of the show, and we firmly believe at the ending of the show, um, you will be equipped. You will be able to make um, better decisions because now you have a perspective. Is it the perfect perspective? Is it the right perspective? Who knows? But you will have a different perspective that you can look at things in a different way which would enable you to make better decisions um just to re just to, to show some gratitude for all the shares that we had from the show from the last show and some of the previous shows that we uh, that we had we we are grateful uh, for the shares because we know we're reaching um, the ears of the young people, but please continue to share. We encourage you to uh, to get others to hop on on the show. Um, your peers, your parents, your coaches, whoever need to that you can can invite. Please do so. Um, if you haven't done so yet, please also subscribe to our channel, Kyrie McKinnon and Co. Um, to be a part of this uncommon drive, this um, unscripted movement, but more importantly, this authentic podcast. Um, we try as much to be as authentic with what we're saying and bring a level of reality to the show. So 
Tonight we will discuss the realities of a coach. Um, hopefully, hopefully this will um, enlighten. <clears throat> hopefully this will bring some some amount of help and clarity. Um, a parents truly understanding the role of the coach uh, and how that how that affects not just you um, but how it affects the athlete or the athletes within the game and one thing i want to remind you that you know understanding and knowing is is important and having faith helps you to to reach uh, reach that level and money cannot buy faith money cannot buy faith faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen so you're only um you only qualify um, to achieve your purpose when you do so by faith substance i have a desire i have a need i have a passion i have a purpose and i've got to be willing uh, to be brave, I have to be consistent and disciplined without evidence of the desired outcome. So it's important. It's important that you understand that money cannot buy faith. It can only come by the steps and the willingness um, to trust what we have on the inside and that drives us to do positive things uh, within this world so i don't know if you've heard if this is the first time on on the coach kayo show but nevertheless we would like to introduce you to our our ex kmxvi brand um it's a great time this would be a great time to become familiar with it because it's the new way forward take a look <laughs> Coyote, McKinnon, and company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable, and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts, and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon, and company. We care. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Coach Kyo Show. Kyo Day here. Um, please share, share, share as much as you can. Please let me know that you're here so that we can start this conversation. Um, we could provoke uh, what needs to be provoked so we could find solution in, in order to move our youth forward. We need, um, we need reinforcement. We need solutions to um, this problem that we have within society or young people are, are lacking with direction. Um, they are they are living off of trends and off of what they're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, but not necessarily having their, their own identity. So we want to discuss uh, realities uh, of, of the coach. Um, so to do to do that with me, as oftentimes, the wingman, the wingman, the greater Wall Ahmed, um, will be discussing this topic with us again tonight. A wall, <clears throat> how are you doing, King? What's I'm going good. on? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, King. How good are you? Have you here. Good to have you here. We're talking about the realities of the coach, which you know, some people might be like, Oh, finally, you know, we're coming off of some of the things that makes. Uh, people very uneasy. Nevertheless, we'll see what will happen at the end of the show. What's going on? Talk to the people. 
No, everything's good. Just another. Uh, it was actually a great week. You know, a lot of things going on in our in our program, and you yeah. know, seeing things move forward. You know, what I mean, God is good, and one thing that we talked about is faith. Without faith, there's nothing. That's the reality. Yeah. Without faith, there's nothing. Yeah, that would be big. I've been big for the past couple of weeks. Uh, this faith drive and and truly, truly understanding what it really means, um, and and knowing that it starts there. Yeah. It starts there. Yeah. Um, the most important thing is that you can't see the very thing that you have to trust, because people call it all the time. <laughs> people call on it all the time, but never never really portray that level of faith and you know we talk about it in the last practice about you know the the, the level of faith that job showed and, and and nobody should be asking for that level of faith like that's a dangerous faith to ask for but it's a great example mm -hmm. to what to see what being great is <clears throat> And you will see there in, in this in this discussion tonight, we call it discussion because we would like you to take part. We would like you to ask questions and, and, and get, and we could get some feedback and a bit of understanding of what is going on because our role here is to impact, is to inspire, is to um, help young people, more so young people. And if it, if it reached beyond that, then to God be the glory, but our our goal here is to make sure that our young people they're living out their purpose and we have more healthy young people from a psychological perspective um, where it will eradicate bullying and all these these unnecessary things that are happening within the society mm -hmm. so i want to start by first identifying what what the coach is and and in in this in our area, in our community, in, from our perspective, hi Elizabeth, uh, good to good to see you here. Please do share. We are grateful for your presence. Um, feel free um, to throw out some comments so we can share, 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 share with the people. A leader with influence to move you from where you are to where you need to be. That's simple. That's simple for us. Leadership for us is. Can you have that impact? Can you have that influence? Not telling somebody what to do, <laughs> but creating an environment, creating a culture where uh, they are able to move from where they are to where they need to be. It's not just moving. Not everything in motion um, is taking you to your, to your desired destination. You could put a boat in the sea, and if you don't set the sail, it will go anywhere not necessarily a destination. So what we what we believe in here from a, from a coaching perspective or a coach's perspective, um, we call coaches leaders. You're not just you're not just coaches, you're not just the body of the thing, but you are the process of the thing. So the coaching, which is the process. And that is moving someone from where they are uh, to where they need need to be your thoughts <laughs> absolutely right absolutely right and that 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 process it has to be done with knowledge like i said with, the, with a lot of young um coaches that are out there that are that want to be that want to be top coaches or that want to really develop their craft um it has it's a long process because for me to to move a player to where they need to be i need myself to understand where i need to be i can't move somebody if i don't know myself so that's 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 the dilemma I believe a lot of young aspiring we could say we, we can't say coaches yet because they're they're trainers transitioning into coaches but I mm -hmm. want to be that want to be top level coaches you know we have to understand first what we're doing before we can actually help a young athlete get to where they need to be such an important statement there because most people don't want to believe that they believe that they have something and and that thing is what it is. But oftentimes, who, who is measuring that thing? And who is reflecting on that thing that you say you're doing so great? And how do you know it's great? And it's such a peculiar situation to be in because you're responsible for young people. You're responsible for the growth 
of young people. You're responsible for steering them in a direction that they're able to maximize their lives and maximize their potentials. And yet you you believe where, where you stand is where you need to stand. And there's nothing or no one holding you accountable. The only thing that holds you accountable is the money and the check that comes um, every month or how big your bank book look. Um, I've never seen them pull the bank with your money behind your horse. I've never seen that. I've never seen they 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 take they take your vault and be like, all right, we'll attach it here and we'll take it down to the grave. You leave all that stuff. So you have to be, there must be something more that you're doing that is impactful. But there's a reality, there's a reality for our coaches and and and, and what they're dealing with every day. But if we don't know who they are, then we, this discussion would just be kind of crazy. So we, we want to start there. And then we look at reality and we know things being real, simple. And people talk about reality is things being real. If you go and look at the origin of the word and you go deep into all our studies and all that thing, we, we, we don't have time for all of that now. But it's things being real. And let's just keep it real. It's not things that you imagined or suppose mm -hmm. it's facts it's something that are occurring so when you talk about reality is something that is occurring now um, that's why i don't like when people say you have to be realistic because it, it kind of gives finality to something that only god can truly define so when somebody say well you have to be realistic like what, what do you really mean how can I be realistic about when I have to when I have to have faith, right? Think about it. So on one side, you got faith is a substance, is substance, something that you need in life, but you have no evidence of it. So you have to walk and you have to work and you have to believe and you have to keep going. But then somebody say, be realistic. And being realistic is being real. Yeah. <laughs> it's facts. But then if you tell me be realistic, are you not limiting me in a way? Of course. Of course. So the realities of the coach is uh, the coach have a process which they have to be real, which they have to have faith. <laughs> Yet they hold a standard based on what people can see. Mm. So if I can't see it in a year, then I've got to move on. Move on. So now you're putting a time limit on something that you weren't responsible uh, for. You didn't give me no talent. You know, talent is an it. it. It comes from God. You're born with that. So you are putting timeline on something that you didn't create. So this word, this word reality, you know, people confuse it by telling someone to be realistic. They are putting, uh, they are putting uh, a cover on a thing that only God can truly define. Mm -hmm. So, coach is reality, um, and I think it's very important that we mention that all coaches are dealing with things that are real. Coaches, real coaches, who are in this for the progression of our young people because that's what we speak to of course Obviously, coaches are managing all the people and whatnot but we we are addressing the young community coaches are dealing with things that are real reality both on and off the field the field we understand though the real things we understand on the field, like player development, um, we understand there's a long patient process. We understand, um, we understand player profile. We understand, we, we understand all the, these are these are real things. These are real things you're dealing with every day. Players commitment. Some of the things off the field, players commitment, players learning ability, relative age effect. All these things are, are going on, cohesion, the technical aspect of it. 
the tactical aspect of it, the physical part of it, the psychological part of it. But the real, the real problems that exist uh, within the coaching environment is the big one. The parents' expectations, parents' perspective, and the culture in itself. You know, I'll say it again. There's stuff that you, as a coach, you're dealing with that is real, that you have to deal with. And, and that is a process by itself. And you have to deal with it because that is the whole essence of uh, can I move the player from where they started to where they need to be? And they have to go through this process. And we get that. And we have to be patient and we have to, we have to uh, pursue it and we have to have perseverance and commitment and discipline and all these, these things that are needed. Excuse me. But the coach's reality of the field, <laughs> the reality of the field, it's, it's stifling uh, the very the very thing that will help with the growth of our young people is, is the expectations. The expectations are one. The expectations and the parents' perspective and the culture within the game. Go ahead. <laughs> perspective parents perspective um let me let, let me start let me start with that um yeah like i said everybody every parent supports their child 100 percent for the most part for the most part but these expectations that parents have it's some of them are very unreal in terms of the time they give for the expectations you know what i mean we've heard we've heard parents expecting a child to improve in 10 days to, to to become a, a a top a top striker a midfielder in 10, 10 <laughs> that's that yeah. it's not real it's not real it's not real it's, it's not, not real, real. Yeah. it's not it's not real and we had these conversations but this is this is the general this is a general consensus from a lot of parents they believe they believe this 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 reality that that has been put out there by organizations that you can you can get it or you can whatever you want we'll give it to you if you if you believe this is this is what you want you want your child to be a striker okay pay for this and you'll get this and that's not the reality that's not the reality for for coaches that truly understand the game that that's a false sense that's a false but sense of parents. but but is the parent expectation of the field that drive um what we will talk about as a main reality that coaches are facing, but we're establishing that these expectations um, create, this is a reality within, this is a reality, this is as real as it gets. You know, perspective, expectation, let's be honest, this is not a soccer, really football culture. When you look at the advanced advanced countries you know this is still new it's still it's still developing it's still building it's not a culture because there's no way in no other part of the world a kid comes to a practice with the shin guard out of their socks and, and a chubby bottle a small bottle of water say they come to play soccer with a batman watch on the left hand like and come with american football shoes that, that's that don't happen nowhere in the world you will come bare feet yeah, you can have those shoes, but you understand the task, you understand the expectation. So, if you're being real, it's not it's not a it's not a hit. It's it's culture. Like not every culture will be the same. Of course. So when you look at it from a a culture perspective, this is not the this, this is not a culture of what the game represents. So when you start talking about expectations and perspective, it's coming from a place of um, what I've invested. The expectations are based on money, not the reality or the, the realness of the game. Because there's no 
there's no true understanding of what uh, they're getting involved in. And I, I get it. Um, but it don't change the fact that it's real. It's something that exists, that is something that coaches are constantly dealing with and which most of them have watered down um, what it's supposed to stand for. Mm -hmm. So now you create this perception, uh, perceptive culture that is not real. But people want something that is real. Let us know that you're out there. Please share your comments, ask your questions. So we create something that is unreal. It's like a reality show. We portray this realness, but it's not necessarily real. So now okay. somebody's believing in something to be real that is not real. So it creates dysfunction and it creates, it creates a lot of problems. Now this expectation, these expectations start forming perspective. Mm -hmm. Understand? Yes. What's good, Marlon? Good to see you. Um, Hi, Sonia. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for being here. Please continue to share. So this this perspective now, now it 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 continue to to evolve or it continue to it continue this culture of something that is not real. Take for instance Holland. If you get a chance, to, there's some books out there, and how Holland came up with this. You know, we we look at we look at the Dutch and we look at them as <clears throat> one of the main reasons or a focus point in how we understand space and how we we play with space and how they're so they could orchestrate in in in, in, in tight spaces and stuff. But you look at Holland, they're 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 under they're underwater. So a lot of the a lot of the areas are flooded. So they have to learn how to utilize space with the amount of people they have. So they had to be, they had to be very specific and precise with how they manage those spaces so that everybody can live and live comfortable. That culture in that culture itself start teaching one how to utilize space because that is what you're living in every day. So th that principle in itself form a certain behavior. You understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah, and for me to realize that, that that the Dutch spend a lot of money in 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 art, and we know art is it, it has a lot to do with creativity. And what you what you see, what pictures are you seeing, and then those pictures become reality. It becomes real. They say things are created twice: first in your mind. And then in your behavior or then in your actions. So you look at that culture and then you put it to the you put it to the field. Because when you're talking about, we'll get a little deep here about game model and, and style of play, it's built around culture. So think about some a group of people come here and they create this unrealness about what development and the culture is. Now you got people having expectations on something that is not real. Yeah. It's dangerous. And now when we, when, when you now come with the truth, you know, you know, the truth is, is, is the truth is very, the truth is a tough thing, right? You, you are, you are labeled as, as many things, which we're not going to, but a quick interruption, just to encourage some intelligence and, um, to our learning corner, our learning corner. We'll be right back after this. So we had a little bit of um, a bit of thing there, but yeah, as we were saying just now about the, you know, this this culture in which um, that is created here. It's not a representation of the trends that is in the international in the international arena. So it's is this false sense. And this is the reality of the coaches because 
<laughs> they've created this. This is one of the things they created. This is why I said off the field, there's an expectation from the parents. There's a there's a a, a perspective from parents, and then there's a culture. So let's use this time to just quickly interrupt so we can bring some intelligent, some tactical thing from our learning corner. <laughs> under pressure but there's still a window that the five can use um, to utilize space um, on the right side for the seven so the while the three is on the outside he's still um, keeping the seven in front of him which allows the five and the four to come in line and get compact and the one to push up to stay connected in this way when you force the ball to the two now we can change our behavior and close space. This allows us to have transition moments um, that we can utilize because of their positioning. Obviously, the four may want to come in here, the three might come, the, the 11 might come, but they're all forward of the ball. So if we stay this compact, there is transition opposition, um, there's transition moments. Uh, for us. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Coach Kayo Show. Kayo Day here alongside me, the great Awala Med. If you would like to sponsor that segment, uh, please feel, please use the contact info. Please feel free to, to reach out. Um, help us so that we can help our young people. Um, it's also our cash up there. <clears throat> if you want to support our developmental projects, um, we surely, we surely would appreciate it if you appreciate the content in which we are sharing. Um, the more you give, the more you receive. Of course. So. As a coach here, you know, you're dealing with some commonalities um, opinion, perspective, uh, with no facts behind it. Reality. You know, somebody, they're in a big job, they went to a big school, you know, they're intellectual, let's say. They're, they're smart people. I realizing that not everything in theory is practical, and especially when it comes to soccer, uh, it comes to the game of football, based on where you're listening from, uh, those two things can easily uh, be uh, be messed up. Because not because somebody's educated on principles, that means they can implement it. Okay? Just like, just like a coach can teach um, the players all the principles, but it's their application. Is their commitment to to downloading and encoding the, in, the 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 information where it becomes knowledge, and and, and that knowledge forms a, a perception. This is good perception. Perception leads to actions. So it's it's bigger than just somebody sitting there in front of you and singing all. Um, they they sung so intelligent and they can articulate themselves well and put the T's where the T's need to go and, and everything else, that, that's all good. And they're coming from big schools and they're educated and they understand business. But at the end of the day, it takes leaders to develop people. It don't take suit. It don't take ties. It don't take what school you went to. All those things can play a major role. But it's how you use it. It's, it's, it's what you do with it. It's what type of heart. It's what type of heart you have in terms of the message because like they said the heart of the author always follow his message so if you if you can if you can't separate those two things you you may be on a path of something that is not real and we're talking about coaches reality question that coach. means the ability uh, the realities of a coach that's what we're talking about the realness of moving coach moving the participant the player the athletes from where they are to where they need to be so it's the realness of moving okay 
Um, it's. <laughs> and we I talk about it not being a rich. Before we talk about it not being a rich soccer culture, while it, it's a rich country, we know that some people might say it's, it's the richest country, but it's not the richest country when it when it when it comes to the game. It's not the most. It's not the most wealthy country when it comes to the game. That is the reality. That is real. And to the other advanced, and and are they making strides to get there? Absolutely. Are they there yet? Absolutely not. Um, and this is a major reality. And coaches are faced. Uh, they are faced with, and and have to stay focused in all of this madness. They still have to stay focused in moving the athletes to where they need to be. But how are they doing it? Go go ahead, question. Okay, yeah. The question was from, from one of the parents. Um, I believe it's a parent. <laughs> but it said that the parent does not have the parent does not know the reality of the sport. We trust in our coaches to tell us the truth. So how do we know who's telling us the truth or not? I mean, one of the things about one thing is about truth is always evidence and if you don't if you don't have evidence about what you're hearing and what you are involved in you are not in the truth you're not in the truth like there must be you're not going to understand everything but there must be a base there must be a foundation because when you go to games and you listen to parents speak on the side to be honest you know they don't know nothing about the game they're just emotionally invested because they, their money is invested and they don't want their money to be wasted or they feel like it's a grocery store where they pay and they get back something. Um, not realizing that your responsibility is to invest in your child, but you also your child needs to be doing the work. And if you don't know what that work is, you also walk in with a false sense of what you're paying for. Don't blame nobody for that. That's why people argue a lot when they see the kids on the bench, when they see, because they, they, cannot, they cannot define what that player role is. Mm -hmm. They just know that they're on the bench, they're not playing, and that's not what I pay for because the contract says we should have equal playing time. Once again, that is not real in soc in the soccer world. That's why I said it's 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 not a soccer culture. It's not a football culture here, because that is not real. There is merit to be on you have there is merit to playing on a field. You must possess certain qualities from a from a personal standpoint, from the expectation of the team based on the game model. And from the coach's idea and what he wants to see, you you are not you are not equipped with those things. So what are you trusting? You are you are trusting your own emotions, and you trust in because your friend go in there and you want a ride, and y'all could y'all could pull up your ride. You go in mm -hmm. there, so you people are making or not necessarily you. I'm just ex, I'm just saying some of these how we create these decisions. And those decisions have no basis on your child's development. What you have to pay attention to, do you have evidence to monitor and measure what, how your child is growing? And if the club you're part of can't sit down and share that with you and articulate that, not with evaluation, why would you wait for evaluation after three months when this, they have something called IDPs? So at the end in the three months, when the league is on break, you will get the evaluation about all the things you don't do well. Then you're going to look for Coach O'Wall to work with you for two weeks or a week and then say you're going to get better. How? So it can be, it just can't be evaluation something written. Um, there must be evidence to, to back up and, and, and where, that's why they have ages and stages of development. And they have relative age effect. They have biological development and, and chronological development. And you have to, all those things you have to, you have to know. You are investing in your child. It's, it's not okay to say, I don't know. I've got to be, I've got to be able to seek 
advice. I've got to be able to seek consultation. I've got to, I've got to have consultation. Mm -hmm. And I've got to be able to, one of the great things about parents is they can have the information to have better questions and be able to monitor things in a more meaningful way. If you're not going to go through all of that because you have a job, stop going to the game on Sunday and de demanding expectations. Mm -hmm. Stop going to the game and saying, oh, the child not learning. You don't know what learning looks like. You don't know what it looks like. So how are you defining it? So you have to have evidence. You have to have clear evidence there that your child is on the pathway, that there's a clear roadmap for the development of your child. Do you understand? You don't have to ask that for Liverpool or Manchester City because it is seen. The players are moving to the pro teams. The players are going and play all over the world. So there's evidence there of what they are doing. So they don't have to sit down and share that with you. And nobody's asking for that in England and in, in Spain and in Germany. No parents are asking for that. Why? Because there's evidence there to prove that the players are moving on. You understand what I'm saying, Owen? So yeah. if, they, if, if, if you're in a club and they say they're a big club and they haven't have a national team player or two or three players in the past 10 years, where's the evidence of development? Mm -hmm. Where's the evidence? Oh, somebody needs to be held accountable. I'm not saying they might not, they might be doing the work. They might be, they might be, remember we talk about process development. Yes. They might create the process. But if your application is is poor and 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 what you're talking about in the car is who make the mistake and the coach don't know what he's doing, but you're not holding your own child accountable based on the expectations, then it becomes a problem also. Of course. So all of that being said is you have to have a clear roadmap. If there's no evidence in that program to show what they would have done, I'm not talking about the connection and the link so you could go to the school. And uh, we're not we're talking about you're, you're, you're investing in your child so that they have the opportunity. Nobody's not saying they will make it. Because not everybody's making it who go through Liverpool Academy or Manchester United Academy. But at least the process and the genuineness and the honesty is there to help this person to grow. It's now your application. It's now your discipline. It's now your commitment. We pay in, but we're not demanding commitment from our kids. Like, you're child training three days a week. How are they going to develop? How? How? When the basis, when the bare minimum of training is 13 hours a week. You want to train three days. That's what, four and a half hours? Yeah, you and some don't even get that, coach. And some don't even get it because yeah. it's only it's 15 players in the team and nine show up. So how will you know? Mm -hmm. You have to have evidence. You have to seek. You have to have consultation with people who will make you understand or make you have a clearer sense of what you're investing in. If you don't have that, and you're just going off of your friend and what your friend said, and oh, it's a it's a cool coach, nice, and he, you know, he's very friendly and very charismatic, and he's very he's approachable. Yeah, all those things matter, but that don't mean nothing about development and what you're paying for. All those things might play a part, might be a very comfortable environment, and but we know people don't develop in comfortable environment. Mm -hmm. They develop in uncomfortable environment that they become comfortable with. So that's a good question. Hopefully, um, we were able to shed some light there. Okay. Um, you got another one. You ready? Yeah, how much? How much is? In, how much is investment? Like, I, I guess that's what they're trying to ask. How much should you pay for investment? I guess. How much should you be willing to pay for for the development? I would ask on drugs. How much? How much will? It, how much will be the price? What will be the price? 
to get them help. I, I don't believe no parent would put a price on it. Okay. But then I'll answer the question. Um, like I said, we start off talking about faith. And, and faith is your ability to believe in what you're doing. And there's an activation from God that happens when you are pure with your investment. You know, I remember the story of Job and the wife of Job. This is this is his wife, the, the woman who's supposed to love him and, and, and look out for him. She said, curse God and die. And I... And, <laughs> and I mentioned that because she never said, "Curse God, let both of us die." She said, "Curse God, let you die," because all these things we lose it, I don't want to lose it. So you die, so I could keep everything. She wanted to put a timeline when God was doing what He was doing, and if it wasn't for Job, we want we want truly understand the measure of faith. Now, do I want Job faith? I, I no, I'm not asking for Job faith. <laughs> Then we go and look at Daniel, the faith he showed. Daniel didn't say, I'm going to stop praying until this thing pass so that I don't go in that lion's den. He said, I will keep praying. And because he did that, it proved to us once again. If you have, if you have, if you believe in God, I'm not talking about no religion. I'm just, I just saying, boy, there's a book that got evidence, enough evidence to make me want to look at it. Yeah. So I look at that and I'm saying, you have to invest believing that you are not responsible for that greatness. Okay. God is. But you are responsible to make that step. You have the choice to make that step. So how much investment is investment? It's your genuineness to support, if you're a parent, to support the purpose of your child, regardless of that cost. The moment you want to put a limitation or you want to be realistic with it, then you are playing the hand of God. So you might as well stop investing. Because one thing about God, he, got, he, he must get the glory for everything. Of course. I wonder if I would have stopped when they said, well, you will, you will, be, you will, be, a, 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 an, a, you will be a dunce. I was in middle school when, when the teacher said, you always playing football. You're gonna be a dunce. You're gonna end up on the streets doing nothing. No, telling a telling a young uh, like me, you know, I was going to school with my cleats, you know, and all these things, and having this big dream, and here this adult who who's supposed to be intelligent, and I have to listen to that, and that might that I might be convinced that you know this teacher is right because. Yeah. She, she is the one with the with the intelligence. She's the she's the one with the with the qualification to help me to grow. And she's saying you will be a dummy. You will turn out to be nothing. You understand? What if just just what if I had listened to that and I didn't I didn't I didn't decide to get up every five o'clock in the morning and go run and run with tears in my eyes and believe that I could do this. I will I will do this one day and I will. I will be able to impact young people. And what if, right? What if? So, and I've done this all my life. That's it. But I've never gone to jail, you know. You know, I've never had a drink. I've never had a smoke. I've, uh, you know, a lot of things I got to deal with. But, you know. <laughs> it's life. But the reality it's is, right? That's the reality. There's, there's no there's no price there's no time okay there is purpose so if you, if you can recognize that there's this 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 is a purpose you're gonna have to hold them accountable they're gonna have to have discipline and commitment and they will have to show you they were they're willing to work hard to make themselves approve but there shouldn't be no there shouldn't be no limit there shouldn't be no, I know, I know that will hurt you. I know that might hurt your feelings. I might say, yeah, you're a madman coach. Yeah. But what happened if Job had cursed God? What happened? What would have happened? We won't have nothing to stand on. 
What if Daniel would have stopped praying? What if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided they were going to bow down? What there's so many stories. What if Jeremiah said, I wasn't going to follow what you said? What, what if, what if, what if, what if they didn't stay in 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 the wilderness what if what what if they didn't pursue and we see we saw what happened to the people who didn't believe of course they got left behind we know the story of the promised land it's still there it still exists so to you to that question is don't put no don't put no time or no price it's fate because you won't put a price if your child is struggling with drugs mm -hmm. If your child is struggling with psychological issue and mental health issues, you will do everything in your power to make sure that that child is okay. Of course. Do the same when it comes to purpose, when it comes to gift. Your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men. It's not your money. It's your faith. And as you show the faith, you 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 activate the person who actually giving you the money if you want to believe that <laughs> if you want to believe that okay but we believe it over on this side um we believe it wholeheartedly um but you know who's real of all like we oftentimes say boy pro installation i can't tell you but it's better to hear from them okay Pro installation. They are, they supply your every needs. They are the ones who will be as real as possible. You don't want nothing, you don't want nothing more real than that. Okay. It don't get real outside of pro installation. Now is the time to keep your family warm with quality insulation for your home from Pro Insulation Company. At Pro Insulation, we solve all your residential and commercial insulation needs. Attics, crawl spaces, walls and ceilings, new and existing homes, and we offer traditional insulation and spray foam. Call Pro Insulation Company today for your free in-home estimate for all your insulation needs. Leave it to the pros and call Pro Insulation Company in Plainfield today. Welcome back, Coach Kyle Show. Welcome back to the Coach Kyle Show. Kyle Day here alongside me, the great Awal Ahmed. But Awal, we want to talk about one thing here before we get off, jump off of this show, is, you know, the realities of the coach and, and, and one of the things um, is adversity. <laughs> this, this is a big reel. This Jeez. is a big, big reel. Um <laughs> Adversity. Adversity. We have said it's a state or instant of serious, instance of serious or continued difficult or misfortune. Adversity. Um, this could mean different things to different people, different mm -hmm. coaches. Um, nevertheless, parents are constantly within this environment. And, and, and we say it with all due respect to parents you have a major role and when you are so important we need to zoom in we need to we need to shine a bright light because you create these difficulties because most like the question we had before they're not knowledgeable about the holistic process but more importantly, they are not paying for something that they truly understand. Mm -hmm. Not because it, the thing is not facts, mm -hmm. but they don't they don't understand. I'm not saying it's fair or unfair, because every man is right in his own eye. Whatever you see and whatever you believe, you will do. Yeah. But it don't change the fact that you create this adversity. Uh, in 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 the real sense, or in the reality of the coach, um, because who understand understand. And when people start understanding, especially young people, when they start understanding, it creates it creates something strange mm -hmm. in that environment, 
and be, and rather than things coming closer, there is a battle and there is a fight to maintain power. Of course. Go ahead. Of course. Have some thoughts there. No, no, definitely. It, <laughs> definitely. We talk about that 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 balance of power. Um, like I said, I, I always put into into my reality, into what I've been through. Um, mm -hmm. Parents, especially my my mother, she she has a strong hold because again, with with parents that that maybe that always had that. Okay, if I say this, you have to do this. But with more knowledge, as I've grown, or just as an individual, when I get more knowledge, you become you, you feel inspired. You feel. Mm -hmm. You feel powerful. You feel a sense of worth. You feel a sense of purpose because you understand things and things are more clear. So when you, when, with this knowledge, and then you go back to the person that's pretty much, if you say person that raised you, and there's that battle because that nobody wants to lose power, Kyle. It's <laughs> nobody wants to lose that. And somebody that had a power, maybe a power over you or a power to dictate what you do in life. And they don't have that anymore. It becomes a very, like you said, a very st a strangerous relationship. You don't feel like nothing gets across any type of, uh, you don't even want to have that conversation. You don't want to have that conflict. So you tend to stay away. Mm. It becomes dangerous. And you said, but again, you don't, if you don't want the knowledge, then we know the lack of knowledge, we perish. That means we pass away, perish to pass away. Um, so when it relates to, especially when it relates to you and I, we you know when we speak about these things, there's an, there's an ethnocentrism there because of, you know, who we are, you know, and, and which creates even more adversity. <laughs> and then you're right. <laughs> this creates, this creates even more adversity because who dare you? Like, what are you talking about? This is just... This is just sports. sports. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. This is not just come and do your job. We don't have no job. This is purpose. So it means it's work. It's work. Because at the end of the day, if you feel like putting your child in something and you don't have no sense or you have no vision or no goal, you are robbing your child of maximizing themselves. You are robbing them of finding their own identity. And adversity exists all across Utah. There's not a weekend that a coach is not saying, well, there can be something coming. Mm -hmm. There will be some. There's, you and I coach, but tell me one weekend that you played a game or one week that you had a training session that you didn't receive an email or you didn't receive somebody telling you something about something that <laughs> happened. Because yeah. every week, <laughs> do you understand that? I want a coach to tell me now that he's going through a process with soccer that is just okay. Not even at rec, you can't say that. Yeah, come on, come on. Not man. even at recreation, which supposed to be about just kicking a ball, having fun, and and socialization, right? Mm -hmm. Not even at that level. There's fights at that level. <laughs> the <laughs> referees getting cursed out too. That's the worst. So the this adversity um, is destroying. It, it, it's, the, it's the reality of coaches. And we're not going to sit down and say, well, coaches are responsible for that. No, no. We're talking about the realities of coaches and we want to highlight this adversity that exists, that creates one of the big realities of the coaches. They're dealing with adversity every day. Okay. Every day. So the process of development is stifled. And who is suffering? Your child. It's the kids. Because that's, that's why we are there. We are all there as adults to, to train up this child in the, in, 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 in the ways that will be pleasing to the one who give them life. But it's crazy. Um, you know, I had a situation. Um, I know of a situation where 
parents were so mad because the coach had more influence when it came to discipline. Like the the, the child would be disciplined why would I be based mad? on the coach's influence. Why would, I, why would I be mad? So and their best bet of of getting of regaining that control and power is to undermine the coach. To undermine the coach. That's the only way we could gain power. We have to undermine the coach's uh, approach to things. When the what what happens there when the player realizes that I am growing, I am, I am finding my identity. I I feel like I don't need to follow nothing. I don't need to follow trends. I I need to. I am healthy in my own skin. I'm healthy with my own deficiencies. I I don't have to worry about what I am not good at. I spend more time on what I'm good at and I develop that Mm -hmm. because people are more impressed with what you're good at. Nobody don't say, you're not good at this, so I'm going to hire you. (laughs) They're like, you're good at this. So you need to be spending more time with what you're good at contrary to public belief. Oh, you got to work on your weakness. Yeah, you got to work with it. But what about working on your strengths? Mm-hmm. Because your strengths is, is who you are, if you know. So all the time you're giving yourself, your, your, your work to the weaknesses, your strength is suffering. Right. So why not work on your strengths? And and by working on your strengths, automatically you you getting rid of those weaknesses. But people will want you to stop to focus on your weaknesses because they don't like it. But ain't worrying about, let's work on your strengths some more, please. Can they even see it though? Can can people even see your strengths? No. Because they're so focused, because the weakness is what is what is what draws their emotions. Mm-hmm. And the weaknesses is what creates these adversities. Do you understand? So there's so much focus and there's so much attention on on the weaknesses that they're not focusing on building the strengths. But you have to want to focus on your strengths. You can't you can't want somebody to focus on your strengths when you're not even focusing on your own strengths. You want to spend time in your weaknesses. Sure. So that 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 story just just brought me back to. Um, there will even there's so much adversity that a coach will feel, face even when they are they are transitioning this child into finding themselves and finding their identity and trusting who they are. They will undermine that because obviously pride, ego, all of these things. This thing. And it and it, it 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 plays such a major role. Do we have any other questions there? Let me check. But, but I was gonna say, why 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 would why would I be upset with you helping my child with discipline? That's something that I would I would love. Because that's what adversity. That's what adversities yeah. are about. That's what it's about. It must constantly create these conflicts. And if you are not knowledgeable about what is needed, but you're investing. You understand, you understand the culture in which you're in. You know, people invest with a profit in mind. You understand? It's all about that. So if you are investing, but you really can't measure the profit, you will you will take a step back and be like, oh, that don't make no sense. Mm-hmm. But you are not responsible for the profit. Do you understand? <laughs> Because anything that is purposeful is by faith. It's impossible. It's impossible for you to measure purpose without God putting his hands in it and be like, I will open up this door for you. So when you it that's why I said adversity will 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 continue to exist because the people who are invested, they are not knowledgeable about the process. And the ones, the coaches, who understand the realness of it, they are staying away from it 
because it takes away the revenue. Revenue. That's a fact. So the thing that has become real is unreal, yeah. which creates the most dysfunctional thing, adversities in any in any walk of life. Um, you're not going to keep them long if there's there's no questions. But I would I would encourage parents because um, this is the reality of the coach. There's adversities there. If you know it or not, it exists. And the the most important people are suffering in the development process, which is your child, the one that you say you love, the one that you say you care for. Um, they are the ones suffering. Um, and if you're not, if you're not looking around and seeing what is going on with our youth, then, or it's either you don't care, or yeah, that's the reality. You know, that's it is the, what it. It is what it is, right? It is yeah. what it is. So, I would say to seek more knowledge, because you can't teach what you don't know. And if you don't know, you in, you invite adversity. If you don't know, you invite adversity. But you're late already because it already exists. Yeah, the coach smiling with you and he's being very charismatic. But he can't wait for the session to over so your child can leave. He can't wait for when your child, God forbid, your child is sick so you don't have to deal with you or your child. He's not going to tell you that. Speak your mind. I speaking truth right now, man. What? Speaking truth. They can't wait when you go on a vacation. <laughs> oh, we oh we gotta deal with 16 players this week. Thank God. Yeah. We, no problem with subs. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, you gone? You got a vacation? Oh boy, we ain't gotta think about who you can play you by because uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, it already exists. Because of your lack of knowledge, because of your perspective, because of your expectations, that is not lining up. So you have to seek knowledge um, so you could teach. This is going beyond the field now. It's coming to your home. Mm -hmm. It's coming to the schools. It's because a lot of players are, are, are in school still. Young players are still school, so the, the, the teachers are the beneficiaries of what's going on on Sunday when it comes Monday. <laughs> you, you ready? You ready, Kyle? Go ahead. Last one. Okay. And this one, this one's this one's a bit deep. Um, I got a quick story. Um, thank you for a lot of things that you guys are saying. Um, there's a there's a child that I know that committed a suicide, which was a soccer player. She was a she was a soccer player, and it's true what you guys are saying. Um, you can look you can look happy, you can seem happy, but truly, a lot of these kids are going through a lot, and we need better mentors and leaders to guide them. Fantastic! Thanks, thanks, thanks for those words because people don't understand the heart of the author always follow his message. I don't care how charismatic a coach is. I don't care how much he smiles. I don't care how much he tells you you're doing. If the heart behind what you're doing is not real, if it's not authentic, and it is forced to be unreal because of the adversity within the culture of soccer, you parents are setting expectations and you're setting and you have these perspective that has nothing to do with the development of your child. It has to do with your money. It does the only thing. You are not putting a timeline on a child that is struggling with drugs. You just, you're not putting a certain amount of money on them. You're not saying, I'm, on, I'm only going to invest $2,000 in you. If you need to guide them to, to, the, to the next part of the world to transition them so that they could be the individual that you want them to be, you will do it. Maybe because your pride is hurt. Maybe because you can't believe that is your child going through all of this. Mm -hmm. But here a child comes and says, I want to be an athlete. And to you, that don't make no sense. 
because you're an accountant, because you're a lawyer, because you're in insurance, because you, you, you're a principal, because you all of these things. This child part is not important to you. But it's not about part, it's about trail. I don't, I don't need to walk your part. I need you to leave a trail so I learn how to walk on my own path. But this, but 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 that, that don't exist. So what? And young people are dying, and, and people think is is such a joke, and they don't want you to be serious, and you, you don't they don't want you to hold these young people accountable, and 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 and, and put them in tough situations to be disciplined, and yeah. to stand on and to stand on 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 things that nobody don't want to stand on, mm -hmm. to be real, to be yourself, to be your authentic self. It don't matter if you can't spell, be be that. Be that you're okay. You will be good at math. No, if you're not good at math and English, boy, you might just be a good cook. We need you. Mm -hmm. We need you too. We still need you. you. Not because you're not the smartest child. We don't need you. We need your creativity. We need your art. We we need something. But people are not taught that anymore because they're more in the, the parents. They're not. They don't care about that. What are you talking about, Sakaza? That's not a life. Yes, the teacher told me to. That wasn't a life. She said that wasn't a life. But thank God, God chose me. <laughs> thank God, God chose me. And he chose this thing. He chose the same thing that don't make sense to nobody to help me to stay on a path where I could, I could get up every day and be like, hey, boy, I, I'm living for something. something. What I'm living for to impact young people to know that here, your purpose is not nobody else's purpose. And nobody shouldn't understand it. Why? Because it's fate. You can't see it. You can't see it. So if you have to convince people at all of your purpose, that means you are trying to convince yourself. And if you have to convince yourself, that means there's doubts. And there's lack of belief. And when and when you have this, this desire in there, and then you walk away from what you, pop, you, you should be living by, then your life is unfulfilled. Now your life has just lost meaning. And how many parents are killing their own kids? You're not going to want to hear that, but guess what? It's the truth. It's the truth. It will take time. It will take time. And whoever, the person that sent them is, I am grateful because this is what we talk about in KMSA. It's bigger than just the sport of football. It's bigger than that. It's finding your identity. One young man said, hey, coach, you see, you, 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 I came here for soccer. I loved it. But guess what? You, you, we talk about music and, and, and you said, boy, if that is your passion, go after it with the same discipline because it's about your fulfillment of your life. And then a couple of weeks after, uh, you, the, the email came and like, hey, I'm doing great things. That's what it's about. Yes. They make it about soccer. What about the child's life? They don't even know who they are. But they're making decisions. <laughs> Right. They're making they're making long-term decisions about what friends they want around them, what people they want around them. And you don't even know who you are. How are you gonna make decisions about things being around you when you're not equipped to know who you are? And who you are is making the decisions about who need to be around you. You gotta have quality people around you, like Les Brown say. You have to have quality people, and that means you have to have your own identity. So kids are killing themselves because they can't find a place where they can live out their purpose. purpose. Couldn't have said it better. Because nobody cares about that if it don't fit the status quo. If it don't make the parents feel proud and, and, and make them walk with their chest up and say, oh, hey, this is this. What about the child who want to do? What about the child who want to work in, in the garbage company? With the recycling and what happened about that child? One day that child can't create their own garbage company. What if they like the environment and that's what they? What, what, oh, no, that, that's that don't represent us. Mm -hmm. 
we have gone to Ivy League schools and what 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 are you coming with here? Because they don't respect purpose. Mm -hmm. They they don't see that, and they can't see it because they're not connected to the source of it. Yeah, of course. It's gonna take time. You can't play a drum for six years and then show up one day and get a guitar. It's not gonna happen. The same six years you were playing that drum, <laughs> you might have to give the same years to that guitar. So they, they, you can't want instant gratification. They have to regress a bit. So we need to start. We need to start in point of, to change in this thing. Um, we have to eradicate this high level of adversity that exists within the coach's environment. And, and like I said, the parents are the big ones in this one. Um, they lead the chart. And, it, and if we don't, then we continue to destroy, um, continue to destroy our young people um, rather than build them. Put purpose first. That's number one. Put purpose first. You could not, you can't say it's unfortunate you have a child. It's a blessing. And boy, <laughs> you might give them everything. That's, that's the reality. But if you're holding them accountable, it's easy. Mm -hmm. And if they and if they like to be held accountable and they're committed, then they will succeed. You can't fail. You can't fail. It's your purpose. That's what you were born to do. Understand before you seek to be understood. A lot of parents want to talk and they want to give advice, but they don't understand. They don't understand what is happening. They don't. They're not asking enough questions. They're not. They're not encouraging the dialogue. They're not. They. They know. They. They. They think they know. They <laughs> think they know, and they want somebody to understand them, but they don't even understand themselves. So seek to understand before you could be understood. You might just get the listening ear that you need, and you might be able to have a greater impact and a greater influence in eradicating this adversity that exists because nothing is real around you because you don't want real because real is expensive. And then you have to have humility. You have to mm -hmm. humble yourself and know that you don't know. And you have to invest in it. If you want cheap, it can come fast, but it's not going to be good. And if you want good and cheap, it ain't going to happen because good is expensive. So which one you want? You choose. <laughs> I don't know. I know it's very difficult, but what you will do, you will create some consistency and you will help to build authentic relationship and you will eradicate the adversity that exists within the youth environment across the board. Emerson said, don't fall apart. You know, leave trails. I'm not following nothing. I'm not following no one. There's a reason why we're all unique. <clears throat> and people who, people who like each other are like each other. Not they're the same. But, cert, but principles govern their lives. So if you want to be a follower, go away. Go go ahead. If you want to go to the program because your friend going to the program. If you're only going to the program because it's convenient, we will continue to destroy our youth. Because you're not even real. <laughs> you're not even real, or, but you want something real. How How does that work? Oh, how does that work? You plant you 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 plant orange, but you you want a banana. Come come on, bro. Come on, you can't. You, oh, you can't. Oh, how how else could you put this? How else? You you are not real in your approach. You are taking the child to a program because it's convenient. You are taking the child to a program because y'all could pool rights. You're taking the child to a program so they could just play with their friends for social or whatever. Social? <laughs> so why some of you not coming down and deal with the small man? Why are you still why are you staying up there? 
Mm-hmm. Why are you staying in that? Because you want to be around like-minded people, right? Of course. You ain't dealing with everybody else. <laughs> You're dealing with <laughs> like-minded people, right? So how suddenly now I just want to play with my friends because it's it's social, it's a social encounter. Does your friend want the same thing like you? Mm, good question. It's crazy how we, we put out all these things and, and, and people fall because it's common. And everybody fall because everybody doing it and everybody saying it so it sounds special. Nobody's stepping back and think about, oh, but your child only there to have fun. My child really wants to play something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So how does that work? Mm-hmm. You won't go ride your bike when I won't go train. Yeah. So who influencing who? <laughs> That's true. So what beyond the child who got more influence on the one who want to play, but, yeah. but you don't want to play. So why are we doing all these things? We're being unreal and we're creating this, this unreal environment um, that is the reality of coaches that is not necessarily real. <laughs> and that's what reality is supposed to be. It's supposed to be real. But the realness is not real. Because it's realness is not acceptable in the culture. Not at all. Because at it's all. expensive. <laughs> but they want it cheap. But want it good. This is a good time to end the show. It's a good time, Danisha. I want to thank you all you here who 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 who, who came who who came in. Um, thank you for sharing. Really appreciate, really appreciate it. Um, we will continue to work. We'll continue uh, to spread this message. Um, it's an important message in this season. Our young people need help. They need help. They need. They need authenticity. They need people to tell them the truth and, and let that truth hurt them and let it burn them to their very core. But there's a desire for it at all. Mm-hmm. There's a desire for the truth. It bothers them because, like I said, you can't play the git, you can't play the drum for six years and then play the, the, the guitar in one day. So you got to allow that time. To, you got to allow that transition and that ad- adaptation and let it happen. But deep down in them, deep down, they want it because it empowers them. Yes, yes, yes. It empowers them. So hopefully, you know, hopefully what was said tonight, we will, we will, we all, we all go back and reflect and, and, and we see where we have erred and where we can be better, where we can understand better so we could be understood. Mm. Closing words, sir. You have the final words. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, um, most important people, most important person in this whole process, like I said, is the is the kids. We've seen, we've we've had our own personal experience with um, with kids that you know felt like they were important, and like I said, it's it hurts because you know that God's put you here with purpose. So a young child with with so much purpose and so much ambition can feel like they don't matter. And that, Mm -hmm. again, like I say, I can't say everybody that comes through these doors must know their purpose, must know that they are important in terms of whatever they want to do. You have the full support of the people around you. Fantastic. No better words. No better words. So have a good night. Enjoy your week. Thanks for being on this podcast with us. Um, we hope to see you here next week. Continue to share. Um, let us continue to spread this message so that we are empowering our young people. Stay blessed. A wide variety of episodes are already available, chock full of incredible insight from two qualified experienced coaches. Here are some previews of eye-opening quotes. Lots of players think they need to drive an hour or two hours to get good training. Because community clubs do not feel, most of them, if not all of them, don't feel the responsibility to provide every child the best opportunity. This is for players to have fun. So why not name it Rec? An elite league shouldn't be based on teams. It should be based on the coaching. There's no integrity in the game.
it's all about business. It's it, That's all it is. There's nothing about soccer first. Everything is about giving the athletes an experience. We hope you are available to tune in. New episodes every Monday night.